What's up, guys? Today, I want to talk to you about specialization and trade. So what is trade? Trade is the voluntary exchange of goods and services between two sovereign nations. Why do countries trade? The first benefit of trade is better diplomatic relations. Think about it. Trade partners are going to be less likely to go to war with each other. In fact, they have a mutual interest to see their trade partners succeed and be more prosperous. Wars are over. Still is over. Another benefit of international trade is greater utility around the world. Utility has a better chance of being maximized when there's a greater variety of goods and services to choose from. Think about it. Do you like to have just cornflakes or Cheerios? Absolutely not. You want to go after those fruity pebbles, those corn pops, that Captain Crunch crunch berries? Sorry, now I'm really hungry. But thinking about your choices when it comes to the cereal aisle is exactly what trade can do for an economy. When consumers have greater choice, they have a greater chance of seeing their utility maximized. And greater choice and better variety is achieved through allocative efficiency. A country on its own is much less likely to be allocatively efficient. It's really hard to produce the optimal quantity of the goods and services that your citizens need and want the most at this exact time. So instead, countries can turn to the international market and buy goods and services that their citizens need with goods and services that they produce domestically. Greater allocative efficiency is achieved through greater quantities and greater choice. At the end of the day, countries flourish because they have a greater variety of goods after trade. Domestic goods and imported goods together meet the needs of their citizens. Another benefit of trade is greater output around the world. As you're going to learn today, trade can better ensure that economies around the world will be more productively efficient and waste less resources in the production process. Greater output is achieved when resources are used more efficiently. Trade can also ensure that economies around the world can increase their production possibilities and shift their PPCs outward. For example, let's say France and the United States engaged in a trade agreement. France. France needs greater resources in order to increase their ability to produce. So they trade with the United States in order to gain those resources. Um, the French? With improved technologies and raw materials, France can now produce at a point that is outside of their current production possibilities curve because their capacity to produce has increased, shifting their PPC outward as they have gained more resources and increased their productivity. But before all these benefits are possible, countries have to decide whether or not to trade or not to trade. Countries will only engage in trade if the trade agreement is mutually beneficial for both countries involved. This is a very important fact of trade. No country is going to trade with another country if they're the one doing all the work. Both countries have to receive some kind of benefit from the relationship. The answer to whether or not countries will mutually benefit in a trade agreement lies in efficiency. Okay, scarcity exists. And because of scarcity, trade is not all about output. Instead, it focuses on finding efficiency. Let's say the United States uses trees as a natural resource to produce lumber, but because of productive inefficiencies, uses all of their trees to just produce lumber and no other goods. I'm sure the United States needs other tree products besides lumber. So what the U.S. should do is find a trade partner who is more productively efficient at producing lumber. They should trade a good they produce domestically in the United States for lumber, freeing up those trees as a natural resource to produce other tree-based products that consumers need and want in the economy. Instead of just lumber, now the United States has lumber, paper, and furniture. Why have only one good when you could have three? If every country in the global economy does this exact same thing, you see how variety and choice could grow through trade. Okay, how do we find trade partners? Trade partners are found by analyzing trade advantages. The first advantage we're going to look at is called the absolute advantage. Absolute advantage is a condition where a country can produce more goods than their trade partner or produce the same amount of goods using fewer inputs. Let's use the example provided. Let's say the United States and Panama can produce two goods given their resources, coffee and corn. And the United States and Panama potentially want to enter into a trade agreement with each other. Analyzing this output, which country has the absolute advantage in coffee production? It's going to be the country that simply can produce more coffee than the other. If Panama can produce 700 billion tons of coffee and the United States can only produce 350 billion tons of coffee, Panama has the absolute advantage because it can produce twice as much coffee as the United States. We now need to find the absolute advantage in corn production. When looking at the output, the United States can produce 800 billion tons of corn and Panama can only produce 50 billion tons of corn. The United States definitely has the absolute advantage because it can produce 750 billion tons more corn than Panama. See? Absolute advantage is really easy. But now let's look at it from the input standpoint. Canada and Sweden can produce two goods, syrup and cheese. Listed are the number of labor hours it takes to produce one unit of each good in each country. When dealing with inputs, the country who has the absolute advantage will be the country that can produce one unit of a good using a less amount of labor time. In other words, they can do it faster. So which country has the absolute advantage in syrup production? If Canada can produce one unit of syrup in half an hour, 
and Sweden needs three-fourths of an hour to produce one unit of syrup, Canada has the absolute advantage in syrup production because it can do it in 15 minutes less. But which nation has the absolute advantage in cheese production? In Canada, it takes two hours to produce one unit of cheese, and in Sweden, it takes one and a half hours to produce one unit of cheese. Sweden has the absolute advantage in cheese production because it takes them half an hour less than it does in Canada. Now, while that may be easy, it's important to note that absolute advantage does not tell us whether or not these two countries should engage in trade. It simply tells us which country produces more or produces the same amount using fewer resources. If we want to find out whether or not two countries should trade, we're looking at comparative advantage. Comparative advantage is a situation where a country can produce goods and services at a lower per unit opportunity cost than another nation. This means that the country with the comparative advantage gives up less to produce a good or a service and therefore is more productively efficient at producing it. If two countries who have comparative advantage in goods and services can find each other and agree to trade, it will ensure that each trading nation can import goods cheaper than they can produce them domestically on their own. Let's take a closer look at comparative advantage. Remember when looking at per unit opportunity cost, we're going to look at the units given up divided by the units gained. Here the United States can produce two goods, coal and oil, given their current amount of resources. The United States can produce 500 million tons of coal or 100 million barrels of oil. What is the per unit opportunity cost of producing one ton of coal in the United States? We're looking at the barrels of oil that the United States could have produced compared to the tons of coal that they did produce. In the United States, the per unit opportunity cost of producing one ton of coal is a fifth of a barrel of oil. What is the per unit opportunity cost of producing one barrel of oil in the United States? The United States gives up the ability to produce 500 million tons of coal in order to produce 100 million barrels of oil. And so the per unit opportunity cost per barrel of oil in the United States is 5 tons of coal. Let's now look at the output of a potential trade partner for the United States, Canada. There's no Canada like French Canada, it's the best Canada in the land. The other Canada is Harley Canada, if you live here for a day you'd understand. With this given amount of resources, Canada can currently produce 100 million tons of coal or 50 million barrels of oil. What is the per unit opportunity cost of producing one ton of coal in Canada? By using their resources to produce 100 million tons of coal, Canada gives up the potential to produce 50 million barrels of oil. The per unit opportunity cost per ton of coal in Canada is a half a barrel of oil. What is the per unit opportunity cost of producing a barrel of oil in Canada? With its resources, Canada will produce 50 million barrels of oil, but gives up the potential to produce 100 million tons of coal. The per unit opportunity cost per barrel of oil in Canada is two tons of coal. We now need to compare the per unit opportunity cost of production between the United States and Canada to determine whether or not these two countries should trade. If each of these countries has a comparative advantage in one of these goods, it means they are more productively efficient at producing it. And as a result, these two countries should engage in trade and allow the country that is more productively efficient at producing a good to specialize in its production, meaning they allocate all of the resources they have available to produce that good. That country will then export it to the other country, thus engaging in trade. Which nation has the comparative advantage in coal production? The per unit opportunity cost to produce one ton of coal in the United States was a fifth of a barrel of oil. In Canada, it was half a barrel. So the nation with the comparative advantage in coal production is the United States because they give up less oil every time they produce one ton of coal. Which nation has the comparative advantage in oil production? In the United States, the per unit opportunity cost per barrel of oil was five tons of coal. In Canada, it was two tons of coal. Canada has the comparative advantage in oil production because they give up less coal per barrel of oil produced. As a result, should these two nations engage in a trade relationship? The answer is yes, because the United States is more productively efficient in coal production and Canada is more productively efficient in oil production. By engaging in trade, these two countries will be able to import these goods at a cheaper opportunity cost than it would have taken them to produce it domestically on their own. For example, the opportunity cost of producing a barrel of oil in the United States was 5 tons of coal. They can import it from Canada at a much cheaper price, say 2 tons or 3 tons, and it's still less than it would have taken the United States to produce it domestically. The same is true for Canada when it comes to importing oil. Which nation should specialize in producing and exporting coal? It's going to be the nation that had the comparative advantage in coal production, and that was the United States. Which nation should specialize in producing and exporting oil? That's the nation that had a comparative advantage in oil production, and that was Canada. In trade analysis, there are two different types of questions you can see. The first is an output question, which is just like the question you worked through with me. You can identify output questions because they'll use output units in the schedule. Let's do another output question using a trade graph. Provided is a production possibilities curve for the country of Japan. 
Notice that it is straight and negatively sloped, meaning Japan is experiencing constant opportunity cost. Japan can produce 30 tons of tomatoes and 30 tons of rice, given its current amount of resources. What is the opportunity cost in Japan of producing one ton of tomatoes? With the ability to produce 30 tons of tomatoes and 30 tons of rice, the per unit opportunity cost in Japan of producing one ton of tomatoes is one ton of rice. In Japan, what is the per unit opportunity cost of producing one ton of rice? Again, the ability to allocate resources to produce 30 tons of rice and 30 tons of tomatoes means the per unit opportunity cost of producing one ton of rice is one ton of tomatoes. Now I'm going to provide a PPC for Japan's potential trade partner, Mexico. Again, experiencing constant opportunity cost, Mexico can produce either 40 tons of tomatoes or 20 tons of rice. In Mexico, what is the per unit opportunity cost of producing one ton of tomatoes? In allocating its resources to produce 40 tons of tomatoes, Mexico has given up the ability to produce 20 tons of rice. And as a result, the per unit opportunity cost per ton of tomato is half a ton of rice. In Mexico, what is the per unit opportunity cost of producing one ton of rice? In using its resources to produce 20 tons of rice, Mexico has given up 40 tons of tomatoes. And as a result, the per unit opportunity cost of one ton of rice in Mexico is two tons of tomatoes. Let's now compare the outputs and the per unit opportunity costs of these two potential trade partners to see whether or not they should engage in trade. Which country has the absolute advantage in tomato production? Hey, it's really easy. Which country can produce more tons of tomatoes than the other? The answer is Mexico, who can produce 40 tons of tomatoes compared to Japan, who can only produce 30 tons. Which nation has the absolute advantage in rice production? The answer is Japan, who can produce 30 tons of rice compared to Mexico, who can only produce 20 tons. Which nation has the comparative advantage in tomato production? The per unit opportunity cost in Japan of producing one ton of tomatoes was one ton of rice. Yet in Mexico, the per unit opportunity cost of producing one ton of tomatoes was only half a ton of rice. Meaning Mexico is more productively efficient at producing tomatoes because they give up less in the process. And so Mexico has the comparative advantage in tomato production. Which nation has the comparative advantage in rice production? In Mexico, the per unit opportunity cost of producing one ton of rice is two tons of tomatoes. While in Japan, the opportunity cost of producing one ton of rice is only one ton of tomatoes. This means that Japan has the comparative advantage because they are more productively efficient at producing rice. Knowing what we know now, should these two countries engage in trade? With Japan holding a comparative advantage in rice production and Mexico holding a comparative advantage in tomato production, the answer is yes. Both countries will benefit from a trade agreement with each other. In trade analysis, there are also input questions. When answering an input question, think of production in this way. In the time it took to produce a unit of good A, how much could I have produced of good B? You'll be able to recognize an input question because they use hours of labor to produce a single unit of a good. When analyzing comparative advantage in an input question, you can put the hours of labor needed to produce one unit of a good into this equation. The time to produce good A, which is the good that's being analyzed, divided by the time to produce good B, the other good that could have been produced. Provided as a schedule for the country of Italy, Italy can produce two goods, lace and nets. In Italy, it takes two hours of labor to produce one unit of lace and one hour to produce one net. In Italy, what is the opportunity cost of producing one unit of lace? In the time it took to produce one unit of lace, how many nets could Italy have produced in that time? If it takes one hour to produce a net in Italy and two hours to produce lace in Italy, in the time it took to produce one unit of lace, how many nets could have been produced? The answer is two fishing nets. In Italy, what is the opportunity cost of producing one fishing net? In the time it took to produce one fishing net, how many units of lace could have been produced? The answer is half a unit of lace. Let's now compare Italy's production to a potential trade partner, Brazil. Which nation has the absolute advantage in lace production? Here we're looking for the country that can produce a single unit of lace in the fewest labor hours. Italy has the absolute advantage in lace production because it takes one less hour to produce one unit of lace. Which nation has the absolute advantage in net production? In Italy, it takes one hour to produce one net, and in Brazil, it takes two hours. And so Italy has the absolute advantage in net production as well, because it takes one less hour to produce one net. Which nation has the comparative advantage in lace production? Using the time it takes to produce one unit of lace, we're looking for the country that gives up the fewest amount of nets that could have been made. In Italy, in the time it takes to produce one unit of lace, they could have produced two nets. In the time it takes to produce one unit of lace in Brazil, they could have produced one and a half nets. And so Brazil holds the comparative advantage in lace production because they only give up one and a half nets compared to Italy, who gives up two nets. Which nation has the comparative advantage in net production? In Italy, in the time it takes to produce one net, they could have produced half a unit of lace. In the time it takes to produce one net in Brazil, they could have produced two-thirds a unit of lace. 
And so Italy has the comparative advantage in net production because they only give up half a unit of lace compared to Brazil, who gives up two-thirds a unit of lace. Knowing what we know now, should these two nations engage in trade? The answer is yes. Italy holds a comparative advantage in net production, and Brazil holds the comparative advantage in lace production, meaning that if these two countries trade, they will mutually benefit from this agreement. Who will specialize in producing and exporting lace? Because they hold the comparative advantage, Brazil should allocate all of its resources towards producing lace and export it to Italy. Which nation should specialize in producing and exporting nets? Because they're more productively efficient and have a comparative advantage, Italy should allocate all of its resources towards producing nets and export them to Brazil. Okay, it's time for a quick review of today's major points. Trade is the voluntary exchange of goods and services between two sovereign nations. Besides improved diplomatic relations, one of the benefits of trade is greater utility around the world. As a greater variety of goods and services after trade have a better chance of satisfying the needs and wants of consumers everywhere. Trade can also lead to greater output around the world, including the ability of countries to shift their PPCs outward and increase their capacity to produce. Countries will only engage in trade if it's mutually beneficial for both countries involved. Determining whether or not trade is beneficial depends on trade advantages. A country has an absolute advantage if they can produce more goods or produce the same amount of goods using fewer inputs. A country has a comparative advantage if they can produce a good at a lower per unit opportunity cost than their potential trade partner. If both countries have a comparative advantage, these two countries should engage in trade, and the country with a comparative advantage should specialize in producing and exporting that good. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you next time on Intro to Econ.